the winter heat got to a lot of drivers early just a week ago here at Tucson Raceway Park. Greg Biffle dodged the mayhem and wound up with the winner's trophy. Chris Trickle put on a great show starting from the pole, spinning twice but coming back to finish second. And he's back with the NASCAR Southwest Tour Series this week hoping for just one more position. You know, these guys run real strong. There's a lot of, a lot of heavy hitters here, and uh, I know Hornaday's here, and I'm looking forward to beating him. Ron Hornaday's the man everyone's shooting for. His career took off after his performance in the Winter Heat Series last year. Dale and Teresa Earnhardt was looking for a driver for their super truck. Uh, they had a super truck going, and Doug Richards and uh, the whole crew put a good truck together. And uh, just so happens I was running good down here at Winter Heat, and uh, I got the opportunity to, to drive Dale and Teresa's truck. Lance, shouldn't you be Christmas shopping or something today? What are you doing out here? Well, uh, fortunately, there's no more off-season. We've got the winter heat out here in the West Coast, and ESPN and Tucson Raceway Park give us a chance to be on national TV, and we can't pass that up. Hey, it's better than sitting home watching football. Chris and the other drivers are looking for an early Christmas present from jolly old St. Nick himself. Oh! Stay tuned. We're going to light your fuse next on Winter Heat. Three, two, one. Gentlemen, start those engines. Twenty-eight drivers have just been given the command to start their motors for the second installment of NASCAR's Winter Heat Series. Today, 150 laps for the NASCAR Southwest Featherlight Tour. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bill Weber, and welcome to sunny and warm Tucson, Arizona. In qualifying this morning, Ron Hornaday Jr. was the fastest car, but they inverted the top eight starters, and that put Hornaday back in the pack. It put rookie Kevin Harvick on the pole. He's never started a Southwest Tour race on the front row, but he's had good success here. A third in winter heat a year ago, and his first series win came on this track in September. Friday, he celebrated his 20th birthday. He's looking for a big celebration today. Now, the three men you met at the open of our show all start inside the top 10. Hornaday is eighth, series champion Lance Hooper is sixth, and Chris Trickle, who had that remarkable run last week, rolls off fifth. Now, let's go up top to the gentlemen that will call today's race, Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons. Thank you, Bill. Well, last week we had the first in a three-race Winston Challenge Series for the NASCAR Late Models. This week, it's a touring series, the Featherlight Southwest Tour. And, Benny, that means uh, no more crashing and banging and that stuff we saw last week, right? Wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Ron Hornaday has to be the envy of every race car driver, Saturday Night Race Car Driver, west of the Mississippi River. He came to Winter Heat last year, has success, and Dale Earnhardt picked Ron Hornaday to drive that super truck. Hornaday moved back to North Carolina. Right now, he's part of the NASCAR circle. He's on the end. Every one of these guys want to be on the inside. If they can, get, if they can just beat Ron Hornaday, maybe they'll get that chance. So, Hornaday, look out. <laughs> Ron Hornaday represents the state of North Carolina, although, of course, he is originally from uh, California. California has the most drivers represented here today, 17. States with two drivers include Arizona, Colorado, and Washington. And then states that have one driver in the starting lineup include Alabama, Rick Crawford, Nevada, North Carolina, Ron Hornaday, Utah, and a driver all the way from British Columbia, so eight states and Canada represented in the starting lineup for today's race. 28 cars strong, and in a couple of laps, we'll be ready to go racing and the green flag. Here's Benny with the starting lineup. All right, starting first, Kevin Harvick, Mark Crow, Mark Grosskreit, Sean Moore, Chris Trickle, Lance Hooper, Chris Rodman, Ron Hornaday back in eighth spot. The fastest qualifier, Danny Crafton, Greg Rodman, Mark Wilson, Ron Eaton, Bill Lars, Rick Crawford from Alabama, and Roger Avance. 16 through 28, Jim Engelbright, Jeff Crow, the brother of Mark, John Walsh, Keith Spangler, Mike Bonicelli, M.K. Hanke, Doug Reno, Daryl Lamore, Ken Peterson, Paul Bangart, Johnny Brazil, Steve Tetz, and Tracy Norman. And two in cars, Benny. Uh, one will be on the roof of the 07 car, driven by Lance Hooper. Should give us a good view of the racing from his perspective. He's the uh, defending champion of the series. And we also have an in-car camera in Jim Inglebright's number 20. All right. Lights are out on the pace car, and in less than a lap, we'll go racing. 
Illinois. It's another beautiful day here in the Arizona desert. The temperature is pretty close to 80. There isn't a cloud in the sky. And for those of you who are back east, and we know there's been some bad weather back there, um, sorry. <laughs> we're loving this. But we're loving it. <laughs> Here we go. Off the fourth corner they come, and the green flag waves. Here we go. 150 laps of racing, 275 lap segments. And a spin in turn four. That's the 46 car of Danny Crafton who moved it in turn four, but everybody avoid hitting him, and there is no caution. He's to the inside of the racetrack in the dirt. Here comes the field off the corner, and Crow still leads. And look at Hornaday on the bottom of the racetrack, using just six oh. degrees of bank. He and Harvey wide. make some contact. Quite another spin over in turn two, the 81 car of Roger Aban spins, and another one off the fourth corner, and amazingly, everybody missed Mark Crow. Wow. We had three spins and stood more than a lap, and <laughs> Rodman spun down in turn one. Chris Rodman spun down in turn one, the 93 car. Holy mackerel. Man, you can't keep up with it, can you? Jeez. Well, let's go back and check some of them. Uh, the last one. That occurred here. Look at this in corner number four. There's some contact between uh, Mark Crow. Is that Hornaday? Yes, it. That was Hornaday, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Look and at this. Look at he backed that. right up the track, and still everybody missed him. How in the world? <laughs> Man. Here's another angle. That's not Hornaday. That's Sean Moore in 48 that makes contact. I'm sorry, Ron. Yeah, Sean Monroe. A uh, little bit of contact, sending him around. But look at everybody dodging. Boy, that could have been a major tangle that took out half the field or more. But as it was, nobody was eliminated. And Crow is lined up near the end of the field. So Sean Monroe now is the leader of the race with Ron Hornaday running second. We've only completed five laps at Tucson. back at Tucson Raceway Park. Six laps make that eight laps now completed in this first 75 lap segment of the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour event. Second week of uh, winter heat. All right, here's the top 15. Sean Moore, Hunter Hornaday, Monroe. What did I say? Moore. I'm not sure saying that. I don't know. Stop it. It's Monroe. <laughs> anyway, you see the top 15 right now. We've got Bill Webb with an update. Bill. Okay, Benny, just a couple of guys behind the wall early. Johnny Brazil was the 11 car. He couldn't, he had a clutch problem and needed a push start to get in the race. He's gone back to the paddock. Also, the 93 car of Chris Rodman involved in that wreck. He spun around, the left rear hit the wall, that flattened the tires. They came in, changed the left rear. That was the one flat tire and sent him back out. Now, sometimes there's a penalty in this series for changing tires, but not if it's flat. So he's back in the race. Yeah, Rodman is lining up toward the uh, rear of the field. And we are just about ready to go racing here as Sean Monroe leads them off the fourth corner and we're green. And Hornaday is breathing down his neck. He shoots to the inside in turn number one, slides up, takes the lead momentarily. Can he hold it down the back, stretch it into three? Come on, Sean, baby. And oh, maybe a little contact, but Hornaday holds on. Hornaday started eighth. He was the fastest qualifier and in 10 laps was able to take the lead. Man. The blue car in third place is Kevin Hurst. Lance Hooper is running fourth. Frank Rodman is running in fifth position. First five running nose to tail. There's a good battle for sixth position. That's Rick Crawford and Chris Trickle. Crawford to the inside at 14 and Trickle outside in number 70. And coming up now to challenge Trickle is Mark Grosskreitz in car 72. And Rick Crawford in the 14, the blue 14, starting back in 14 spot, is now worked his way up to uh, sixth. Grosskreitz, of course, in 72, competed in last week's late model race. Running here this weekend. We'll be back next week for another late model race. An experienced driver here on this track. He lives here in Tucson. 20 car on the outside. There's our in-car camera with Jimmy Engelbright. Eco Radiator in-car camera. Loses a spot. I thought it was a seven, wasn't it? Ronnie. Ooh. 
contact there in turn four. The 20 car is uh, is Dingle Bright and a spin up in turn two. 84 cars back in, back in. That's Tracy Norman from uh, Utah. And the caution comes out for the second time. Oh, and the, one of the Pro Boys is slow. Yeah, that's Mark. He has stopped at the top of the racetrack in turn three. And started second on the outside pole, so it looks the right front tire is flat. Or he made, has he made contact, or is the tire just flat? You can't tell from that angle. There was some damage to Norman's car, and there's damage to the front of this car. Could it be that these two cars have made contact? We'll see. Maybe we have some video that will... He's getting out of the cars. Looks like that he is uh, out of the race, or at least out of this first 75-lap segment. He's telling his crew... Sorry about that. Well, he's only 20 years old. He's uh, has run the Northwest Tour for a couple of seasons. Hails from Visalia, California. Doesn't look good. He's uh, peeling the uh, tape off. That's so he can take the hood off, yep. so the wrecker can pick the nose of the car up and take it back to the pits. All right, we'll take another break. 18 laps are now completed. And Ron Hornaday has moved to the front of the NASCAR Winter Heat Race. Stay with us. Tucson Raceway Park is the scene ESPN 2's Winter Heat Series. Uh, the Featherlight Southwest Tour on display here this afternoon. We're under caution for the second time, and 21 laps have been completed. Ron Hornaday is your leader. Wednesday night here on the Deuce, Benny. This should be a good hockey game. NHL tonight, of course, Thursday through Saturday at 11.30. On Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern time, it's going to be the Blackhawks against the Detroit Red Wings. Of course, Bob Probert uh, used to play with the Red Wings, and now he plays with the Chicago Blackhawks. So the tough guy is going to be coming back to challenge his former teammates. Hockey, is that the one you dribble? No, 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 no. You shoot the puck into the goal. Oh, hockey, that yeah. one. Oh, yeah, that's exciting stuff. <laughs> 7.30 on uh, Wednesday night. Well, Mark Crow's car is still at the top of the racetrack in turn number three. And he is trailing a lot of uh, liquid down the racetrack. Now, this is what happened to him earlier in the race. He was leading at this point, and this is what happened. He and, he and Sean Monroe made some contact, and he comes around to someone hit him, and close. <laughs> no. And then 10 or 15 laps later, the car stalls and stops up at the turn. But I think the right, right front tire is flat. Well, it's on the way to the uh, pit area. And we'll be ready for the second segment of our 150 lapper here this afternoon. Here's the top 15. Hornaday is still the leader. Sean Monroe running in second position. Then Lance Hooper and Harvick, Rodman, Crawford, Trickle, Grosskreitz. There is the uh, wow. there's more than just a wow. flat tire on the right side. Wow. Yes. Uh, the thing ain't hooked to nothing. That's, That's the problem with right. that right front tire. It's not hooked to anything. That is a problem. Got their work cut out for them if they can't get it fixed. Bill, what's a, a prognosis down there? Well, this is Dan Deeringhoff. He's the crew chief on the 24 car. Uh, obviously, you've got a big problem now, but you did get hit earlier. All right, that's right. Uh, you know, the Clearwater Forest Industries, Monte Carlo is running really good today. Uh, drivers doing an excellent job, the whole team, and had a mishap there in the first few laps, and uh, that put us back. Had to come in, put some tape on the car. Then we just got in the back of the race uh, accident. You know, it's one of those things. Get her fixed and go make some laps. Okay, well, the car is coming in right now, so they're going to go to work on that, and we'll get a word with Mark, who I'm sure is very disappointed after that great start, guys. One more lap to go, and we'll go back to green. Right now, let's try talking to the third-place runner, Lance Hooper. Lance, this is Benny Parsons up in the tower. You got me? Pretty loud and clear. Okay, what are you going to do with Hornaday? you got to get up there and race with him, man. Don't worry about that, lap 150. <laughs> oh, I got you. A strategy. Lay back and wait for the end, huh? Four. All right, going green. Good luck. Well, that's a good strategy. Uh, we've seen a lot of damaged equipment. If you could just stand out there and uh, keep a good pace, you could be right up there at the end. They come off the corner, and Hornaday gets a good jump on Monroe and the others. And now Hooper goes to the inside of Monroe in the first and second corners, but cannot make the pass. Here comes Harvick, meanwhile, to the inside of Hooper. 
car because the 55 car was the pole sitter, although they, of course, inverted the fastest eight. Ron Hornaday was the fastest qualifier. Three abreast through the second corner. That's Craig Robin in the two car, the Advantage memory card. Remember, he carried an in-car camera up at Sears Point on our Saturday race, the Southwest Tour. And there comes Crawford, Rick Crawford, one of the all-pro regulars, doing a great job. Crawford to the inside of Rodman. Rodman holds that position, which is fifth. Crawford is sixth and triple seventh. Hooper's car. This is the Unical in car on board camera. There's Kevin Harvick in 55 trying to make a move to the inside. Can't. As we said last week, three distinct grooves here at the Tucson Raceway Park. The Got a couple groove, cars behind you. The bottom groove is 6 degrees. The middle part of the turns are nine, bank 9 degrees, and the top of the turns bank 12 degrees. So the drivers can race all the way through the corners here at Tucson. Good. Right behind Lance, we've still got that good battle going on between Rodman and Crawford. Rick Crawford, of course, from the All-Pro Series, finished eighth in the point standings this past year, uh, was the winner at Martinsville. And you know what? He told me earlier today you was there when Crawford said next year we might see a blue Thunderbird on the Winston Cup circuit with 14 on the side of it five or six races. He is tickled to death. We didn't ask who the driver was going to be, and he didn't tell us, but we think we know who it might be. <laughs> he said he was accepting resumes. Yeah, right. Getting <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pressure here on Rodman. Oh, spin oh, down the corner. And Engelbright squeezes. Man, we've got two crashes, but opposite ends of the racetrack, Benny. This is the one we weren't watching. That's the one we were. Park Wilson loops in turn number one, but two cars are involved in a crash down in turn number three. That would be the 81 of Roger Avance and the four of Paul Banghart. Man, oh man, there's some, some liquid coming from underneath the yeah. four car of Banghart. That uh, car has been banged hard. He broke the radiator on that car. That's water that we see running across the racetrack. Here is that one up in turn number three, and boom, Banghart oh. just runs into uh, the 81 car that had already spun Avance. Ron McDonald did not have a very good day, did no, he? No, he did not. There is Paul Banghart waiting patiently in the car, but there's a lot of damage to it. But Benny, you were absolutely right. Uh, despite the fact this is a uh, touring series and a lot of crashes so far. <laughs> but no one's been able to pass Hornaday. Well, that's true. Yep. 37 laps been completed, 13 under the caution flag so far. Yep, some heavy damage to the nose of that car. Yep. There we see Ron Hornaday, the 97 car. Got a good Hornaday story. Yep. We were there this morning when Gary and Nancy Johnson, the owners of this car, told us that 50% of what this car wins today, and it can win, oh, I don't know, around $4,500, something like that. 50% of what this car wins today will go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That Why? Way. Because last year, Ron Hornaday had every wish he'd ever wished come true, being able to drive Dale Earnhardt's car. So he said, I want to repay somebody for making that wish come true for me, and he's given half the money. I th that's a great that story. That is good, and, and that money that he wins today will definitely pay for one or two wishes for uh, terminally ill children. So our uh, best to Ron Hornaday. All right. They continue to clean up over there in turn number three. Let's take a look from Engelbright's replay. Now, this is the 57 car of yes. Mark Wilson. The white car will go down the corner. He spins. Now, watch Engelbright. Nowhere to go. Just brushed the wall and... I thought he squeezed through without hitting anything, but I believe he got him. Let's, let's talk to him, Benny. I think I just, he just brushed the wall. Let's try. Hey, Jim, this is Benny Parsons up ESPN. You got me? Yeah, I copy. How you doing today? Well, I'm doing better than you. Did you hit the wall down there a little bit ago? Yeah, we're just a little snug right now. We haven't quite found out where she likes to run yet, but uh, we're searching around here. We'll we'll be all right. We're just going to kind of make a pit stop on lap 75 there and do a little tuning on it. Did you make any contact with the wall? Yeah, not 
No, we're all right. I just, I just kissed it a little bit. I think we'll be all right. Well, that's like kind of like kissing your sister, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, something that just don't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good luck to you. <laughs> Engel Bright finished second in the uh, Southwest Tour points in 1995, winning one of the events. He was the winner at Bakersfield in May. They're still under caution here at Tucson. We'll take another break and be back with more Winter Heat. Right at the bottom side of Mr. 42 laps completed. We are about to go back to racing after a caution for a couple of incidents. You see this coil on the dash? Is that what that is? Bicycle? That's an ignition coil. And evidently, they feel like it mounted on the floorboard where most cars are, that it's going to get too hot, so they've moved it up where it gets some air too long. Green flag. Here we go. Go, go, go. You heard Jim Spotter tell him that the green was out, and it's time to stand on the gas. Good battle for third, good battle for fourth as they get strung out just a little bit. The 57 car, Mark Wilson's a car that spun, so evidently he is a lap down. Right. I'm told that 87 might. Bonicelli. Bonicelli. Yeah. Ooh. 57 loose again coming off the corner. And here we see Crawford getting by Rodman, taking that spot away, using... Uh-oh, well, I spoke too soon there, did I? He's trying to use the 57 car. 57 car is a pick for the team of Rodman. And Crawford in the blue 14 not able to get it nope, done. He's still having trouble. Meanwhile, there's Chris Trickle in the blue 70 joining that race. I understand the 87 car of Botticelli has been black flagged for and, jumping the start. And here when you're black flagged, you've got to go in the pits, which is in the infield. Yep. So he uh, went in the infield. Now he's maybe coming back on the race track. Crawford still right on the tail of Craig Rodman. Number two. The 14 car sponsored once again by the Circle Bar in Ozona, Texas. I first heard of that when they sponsored Chet Phillip at uh, Indianapolis, and they've been with Chet about all his racing career, I think. As a matter of fact, they sponsored Chet Phillip with a Winter Cup effort yeah, back uh, right. several years ago. Yep. Well, the Botticelli 87 uh, has not heated the black flag, yet now he does. Well, he, he went in there, but he didn't stop. I see. Okay. He didn't stay long enough. He was supposed to stop and get a sandwich, and he didn't do that. <laughs> Unlike you would have done, I would have right? done, exactly. Yeah. He would have stayed for dessert, too, probably. But Crawford is just still all over Rodman, but cannot find the groove. Now he's going to maybe go up top. He's been working that low line, but uh, that has not worked for him. Leader, meanwhile, is coming up on some slower traffic already. Here is Hornaday. That's second place, uh, Monroe. Monroe, yep. Or Moore, whichever, but we'll call him Monroe <laughs> since that's his since name. That's right, yeah. <laughs> There's Hornaday. They've got a lot of tape on the windshield of that car, Benny, because the sun does become a problem in the afternoon. The sun starts to sit, set, yep. and as they drive here into the fourth corner, looking into the sun, and it can be a problem. Here's the battle. Harvick, now Rodman, rather, uh, yeah, Rodman and Crawford have both caught Harvick, and this becomes the battle for what? Four? Yeah. Rodman lost the back as he came off the second corner just a moment ago. Fourth, fifth, and sixth right here. Harvick there in number 55 was the rookie of the year during the Southwest Tour races in 1995. He finished third in one winter heat race. And Bill Weber has more, Bill. He also ran one super truck race in 1995 at Bakersfield. Had a pretty good run, had some bad luck. But, you know, we've talked about how this series can introduce a lot of people to some of these drivers. And what this guy is hoping for 
is that he can get some exposure and field a super truck in selected races next season. So he's trying to take that Hornaday route. He's got the truck, but he's looking for some sponsorship and maybe move into that for some races in 96. Talking about Kevin Harvick in car number 55. His win, by the way, in the NASCAR uh, Southwest Tour Series came here at Tucson on September 23rd. Sixty laps completed, fifteen to go to the halfway point. Laps click off very quickly here. Yes, they do. Harvick, just 20 years old. We mentioned at the top of the show his birthday was on Friday. He turned 20. I'll be a law against that kids at young age. I'm no kidding. I'm just kidding, folks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, and Rodman takes a spot away. Kind of pulled a slide job on that turn one, took the spot away. Rodman posted his Southwest Tour victory in 95, winning two races, as a matter of fact, one at El Cajon Speedway and the other at Las Vegas. And now Crawford to the inside of Harvick. He can't make it. He comes up. He's now got a half car length. He goes to the corner. He'll drive it in a little bit deeper and move up the racetrack and take the spot away. And Harvick will try to go back to the inside, but will fail to get back to position from Rick Crawford. Lance Hooper, meanwhile, continues to run in third position. There's Lance. His uh, roof cam up ahead is Sean Monroe running second, and then ahead of Monroe is the leader, Ron Hornaday. I tell you what, this pretty doggone good race. I thought that Hornaday might drive away once he got in the lead, but we can see he's the second car in front well, of Monroe. Be careful on the front stretch. We have a be careful. There might be oil. Stay to the wall. Turn four. That's Engelbright spinning. The four oil. Looks like Engelbright might have blown up big time, so watch for track. Fourth caution flag of the day. To the bottom of the racetrack there, around the white line. All the spotters warning the drivers there could Turn be oil. Oh. Engelbright said, told his crew went up in smoke. Yep. Doesn't sound good for Jim for the second half. We're only nine laps from the break, by the way. Here it is in replay. Engelbright just up high, spun. You can see that the, uh, there's a little bit of fire there from oil coming out of the uh, engine. engine. That means that there's something broken. The oil pan is broken, and oil is coming off the engine, hitting the exhaust, and catching on fire as it leaves the engine. So Jim Engelbright loosens the steering wheel and climbs out of the number 20. That's a nice commercial there. Did you see that commercial on the screen there a moment ago? <laughs> there you go. That's, that's the folks who sponsored the onboard cameras from Engelbride's car. So, folks, thank you very much. Benny hung a moniker on him a couple of years ago, Groundhog, that he uh, quickly pointed out today that he didn't care for. What was the story on that? He flipped over at, at Sears Point up in turn six, and the car was sitting on its roof when it ended up stopped. And, he crawled from the car, and I made the comment that he looked like a groundhog coming out of there. <laughs> Real nice. <laughs> so all the, the rest of the year, they put groundhog upside down on the rear bumper. <laughs> well, they put the hood back on it. Now they're pushing it to the uh, pit area. Well, that's right. It, it isn't damaged in the front. He, they can push it. It will roll. So. Well, let's take a look at what happened from his uh, in-car. You saw the puff of smoke just before we switched from looking out the back to looking out the front, indicating that the engine let go, and that's what caused the spin. Yep. Got some oil under the wheels, and round she went. Around she went. Yep. 69 laps completed, six to the uh, break. Let's go to Bill Weber. Okay, Jimmy's just brought the car back in here. We'll dive in here. Jimmy, what happened? You know, I don't know. It's coming off a pour there, and the, 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 the steering just locked up on it. I don't know. I, uh, about, you know. Uh, some came loose, and I got into the oil and just spun the thing out. Uh, I, I didn't try to start it, you know. I always do that, you know, and end up blowing up the motor. So in case it's not, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to hurt any more than we already have. Track conditions out there today? 
Uh, the track's pretty good. You know, we were a little, uh, little tight, man. We were struggling. You know, as you could see, we were just kind of fighting it. We was going to kind of wait for the mid halfway deal and, and work on her and, and see what happens. Hopefully, we can get it back out there, though. All right, good luck. That's the story down here, guys. All right, oh. one more lap to go. So that could be power steering fluid we saw the right. smoke from and not an engine. So, yep. well, that's great news. That's $100 versus $15,000, $20,000. So good and news. It'll also allow them to get back into the race maybe for the second half. Okay, they uh, bunch up now for the restart. This will complete lap number 171 when they come down. Four to go to the halfway point. And Ron Hornaday Jr. is your leader. He took the lead on lap number 11. Here's the green, and we're back to competition. What happened to Hooper? Oh, he's up there. Man, we got a race back in the middle of this deal here. And Rick Crawford is Chris Trickle is going to spin coming off the corner. He was the inside car in a three abreast formation around the fourth corner, and it didn't work. There is no caution, however. He rights the car and gets it back going. He spun twice last week during the late model race, came back to finish second, and now he has to restart this uh, race from the tail of the field as we're near the halfway break. Here's Ron Hornaday coming around. The trickle up, I think, is going to be able to stay in front of Hornaday to keep in the lead lap. There's only one more lap to go to the halfway point. That completes lap number 74. Caution is coming out, indicating the 75 lap mark. Good job, bring her in, we'll stick her up. So halfway. Well, a lot of action in the first 75 laps, but Ron Hornaday has certainly demonstrated his strength, having led from lap number 11 through the 75th lap. And now the cars will go into the pit area to get some sure new tires and some work. Here's what happened to Chris Trickle. That's right. He's on the, as you said, three abreast on the bottom of the racetrack and Almost only 60. More, baby. <laughs> oh, yes. Only 60 degrees of banking down there, just not enough to catch the back end. Around it goes. He's fortunate. He went down the, instead of back up across the racetrack in front of traffic, he goes down, puts it in gear, and uh, continues on, and will stay in the lead lap. Well, Bill Weber now goes to work here in just a moment to report all the activity that's going on in the pit area. We will have that when we come back from break to Tucson Raceway Park. Welcome back to Tucson. Ron Hornaday is our race leader. Not bad for a guy who said he didn't have any extra parts of the wrong gear in the car this morning. Well, I tell you, Carlos Ronald, I got to take my hats off. He brought his truck out here and uh, really helping us out. Uh, hope immigration don't show up. All I got, you know, uh, Steve Nash on my crew too. The rest of them are, you know, a bunch of guys too. Uh, Carlos has got, but uh, they've done an awesome job. I haven't seen this car since Phoenix. Uh, we just changed gear. We borrowed a gear just before the race. Seems to be working pretty good. We're a little loose right now. We're going to change the right front spring, so we can do it for the second half. Some great racing going on behind you. Yeah, there is. You know, I got to thank um, HR Generators for getting this thing here. They put it on a little flatbed trailer and got it here for us. I want to thank them for getting us a truck and everything. But uh, good competition back there. And, um, you know, I, I made some moves at the beginning of the race where I shouldn't have. But I, you know, figured we got fast time. I should have been up there anyway. So we'll just see what we got for him next half. Okay, that's Ron Hornaday. He's going to work. Hey, he qualified this car so well, guys. They sold it after qualifying to another guy that's in this race here today. They wouldn't tell me who it was, but they sold this car right after qualifying. Ron says he'll be back, though. He's got an alternative plan. Bill, the question I got, did they sell it after qualifying or after the race? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sold it after qualifying. He said they, you know, obviously he had a real good lap. He was the fastest qualifier. Yep. They wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't tell me who the new owner was when uh, when I asked them. They said, uh, come back after the race. So maybe we'll, uh, if things keep up, we'll just ask them that question of Victory Lane, because I guess the car owner would go to Victory Lane, right, Benny? And they're changing the right front spring on that car. How about that? Wow. And Rod is doing most of the work himself, it looks yeah. like. Let's take a look at the top ten. By the way, there are ten cars on the lead lap. So these drivers are on the lead lap. Everybody else at least one lap down. Harvick, who started up front, is running sixth. Jeff Crow, seventh. M.K. Kanky is eighth. Ron Eaton, the Northwest Tour champ, is ninth. And uh, the 37 car of Keith Spangler running in 10th position. And that desert sun is beating down, isn't it there? Well, it is coming down. It's beautiful. We talked about the car of Jimmy Engelbright just a moment ago and losing the power steering. We see it circle back there. Watch when the power steering hose breaks. He's coming off the corner. 
There's a smoke, the hose breaks, and then some of the fluid gets on the exhaust system and we see the flame. And here he starts coming off the corner. As he said, the steering locked up and he, he couldn't steer the car. He let off the accelerator and when he did, the car spun. Otherwise, it, it probably was fortunate he did spin. Otherwise, the car might have continued on and ran the wall head on. And from the end car, looking back now, first of all, and they'll switch to uh, looking out the front. Right there. there. You saw just a little bit of the flame coming from underneath the car as he went around at a nice beautiful 360 and they're working on that car too rather feverishly here during our what would amount to somewhere between a five and ten minute break for these drivers in the second half of the southwest tour 150 coming up Next week, Winter Heat will feature round number two of the three-race Winston Challenge featuring the NASCAR Winston Racing Series. In round one, the three-groove, three-eighths mile track here at Tucson provided great competition and a few spinners and crashers. Now, uh, let's make that a, a lot of spinners and crashers. Greg Biffle took the win and will be trying for another victory in the $5,000 that goes to the three-race series champ. That's next week at 4 o'clock Eastern time. NASCAR winter heat on ESPN2. Here's Bill Weber. With Lance Hooper, the series champ, five wins this season. How about today so far for you, Lance? Well, right now, this Firebird Oil uh, Pontiac is it's on rails right now. We're letting Hornaday lead the pace. Last 20 laps, we can take this Pontiac to the front. You're letting him lead, is that it? Yeah, we let him lead, let him showboat. You like to do that, but last 20 laps, look, look for this Pontiac to charge to the front. Okay, he knows how to work that. He had nine poles this season, five wins during the year, and he and Hornaday are actually very close friends. They used to work together. They're starting to push these cars now out toward the grid. They will realign them in the position that they brought them in after 75 laps. Now, this is the car of Jimmy Englebright over here. Benny, right on the money. It was power steering. I'll see if I can lean in here and just get a confirmation from Jimmy. As he's, you see, he's got his helmet on, putting on the gloves. Jimmy, how about a power steering? Yeah, it was a power steering line that blew. That's just what we thought. So we're just going to go out there, and we ain't got nothing to lose. We're going for it, man. You got a camera on your car, too. You going to take us for a ride? Oh, uh, you bet, baby. Hang on and go for the ride. Okay, Benny, <laughs> Bob, hang on. Go for the ride. All right, Englebright getting ready to go back out there. By the way, one correction from a NASCAR scoring. There are 11 cars on the lead lap. Chris Trickle spun late just before we had the halfway break. He did manage to stay on the lead lap. Remember last week, he spun a couple of times, stayed on the lead lap and finished second. So Trickle could be a contender here today. We do have five cars that are officially out of the race. 23 will be restarting in the second half, and that's just a few moments away. Well, we talked about Chris Trickle. This is what happened to him just a few laps before we went to the halfway break. They were coming out of turn number four, and they were three and almost four wide when this is what happened. Two blue cars, that's Crawford in the 14, Trickle in the 70. Once again, it's only six degrees banking on the bottom of this Tucson Raceway Park. Not quite enough to keep the back end in tow. Around Chris goes, but he puts the car in gear and drives away, and as you said, was able to stay on the lead lap. Here is Bill Weber to talk with him. Okay, this is Chuck Trickle, Chris's dad, and uh, another adventure for you here today, Chuck. It's a big one again. We uh, qualified good, and the car got real tight. I mean, we just, uh, our right rear tire was smoking. I don't know what happened. We either got a spring or a shock or something going bad. You know, we get to these races, and we're good, and then the doggone thing goes away, and we just can't catch it. But we're going to catch it. We're going to. He'll come back up to the pack a little bit, but it's going to be tough today because there's some pretty hot dogs here, as, as you can see, you know. Uh, briefly, tell us how your week has been since your successful run finished second here last week in Winter Heat. Well, last week we had that IndyCar camera on ESPN2, and it was it was a great week. I had calls from all over the United States, and thanks. Hi, Mom. The whole works. I mean, it was uh, it was great. It was uh, it was an experience that we've never had. Well, they, they worked real hard. The, the only guy they couldn't hear from was, was Brother Dick, but we believe he's on vacation, but we know he's watching on ESPN, too, because <laughs> Dick wouldn't miss a race, would he, Chuck? No, he'd never miss our race. <laughs> okay. Hi, Dick. Back to you guys up top. I know there's not much family resemblance there, as far as I'm concerned, between Dick and Chuck. You think so? Are you kidding me? Uh -huh. They could be twins. I don't think so. No. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, that's Dick Trickle's brother, Chuck. There is Chris, Chuck's son. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. We 
are in the desert. It's hot. It's winter heat here on ESPN2, the second of six weekends of racing here in Tucson Raceway Park. Next weekend, then a couple of weeks break for Christmas and New Year's, and then back here for three in the month of January. Let's check on the full field rundown now here at the halfway part. Harnaday is your uh, leader. Sean Monroe running second. Looking down through the field, uh, the number two car of Craig Rodman started in 10th position. He has moved up to fourth. The number 14 car of uh, Rick Crawford started 14th. He's now fifth. And the 33 machine of M.K. Kanky started 21st, Benny, and he is up to seventh. In other words, he is moving up. <laughs> Folks, you see what I was talking about? It's supposed to be a cow, folks. Come on. I mean, <laughs> he's I'm sure it looks like a cow. They have a dairy sponsorship on that car is the reason that they uh, have painted it to resemble, at least, a cow. As a matter of fact, the Wide World of Maps, a local company here, has donated $200 to the car that moves up, gains the most position, moves up the most, gains the most positions. You get it? Yeah, I got Mars. it. Moves up, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you mean? All right, we understand that Ron Hornaday is trying to reach uh, Benny on the radio. Go ahead. Hey, Hornaday, this is Benny Parsons. You trying to reach me? Got a copy there, Benny. What's on your mind? You know, Doug Richards and everybody sitting back at home, I just got to say hi to him. You know, they're sitting having a party with my wife and all the guys that work on the trucks. Why are you sneaking up the show for Hornaday? <laughs> you guys started me an eighth. I gave you a show for four laps. What more do you want? Well, I mean, <laughs> let one of those guys, let two or three of them buy you now and pass them back just to make it exciting. Is it worth? Oh, you did it once. You're not going to do it twice for us, huh? Well, um, got something for me. I was pretty loose, and I changed the right front spring, so we'll see. I saw you changing that right. Once car was a little bit loose, you stiffened up the right front a little bit? Sure. All right, good luck to you, Ronnie. Guys, I don't mean to stink it up, but I got to get that money for them kids, you know? <laughs> we understand. We told the people that half the money goes to make a wish, and, and we want you to make the money, but, uh, you know, a little more exciting ones. <laughs> All right, well, kind of, you know, uh, ESPN, you know, when they were talking to me and asked me if I was going to do this deal, I said, all you got to do is pay me for the win and start me in the back and put it in the car camp. Hey, there are producers listening. We'll, next time we'll consider it, okay? Four. <laughs> all right, we'll let Ron go back to work here. The field is rolling once again. Earlier today here at Tucson Raceway Park, there's always a support race. That is Matt Nethery, who won the street stock feature. And not only a trophy, but a kiss from the trophy girl. There is the top five finishers. Steve Neff was second, Ned Champagne third, Terry Hill fourth, and Colin Germain finished fifth in the street stock feature that was held prior to our coming on the air. Steve Neff, we talked to him just before the start of our race, and he drove the for sure car, mm -hmm. wasn't it? For sure? For sure he was going to win. <laughs> but he <laughs> but it didn't safe. quite work out that way. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Ron Hornaday is up front. Sean Monroe second. Lance Hooper is third. In fourth position is Craig Rodman, and Rick Crawford is running in fifth spot. We'll be going back to racing here in just a moment. Stay with us when we come back to Tucson. ESPN2's motor sports coverage for 1995, ending the season in 95 and beginning 96 here at Tucson Raceway Park in the Winter Heat Series. We are just about ready to go back to racing. You can hear Benny Parsons clapping his hands. He's as enthusiastic as ever. Bob Huntington, the flagman for the series, waves the green, and we're back to racing. Yeah, I thought Jeff Crow jumped a little bit early in the one car. He is going to be black flagged by NASCAR. And Lance Hooper has taken second from Sean Monroe. Contact between the two cars in turn four. Hooper grabs second position, and they still battle down the backstretch. Hooper in 07, Monroe in 48. Look at Rodman and Crawford also coming up to challenge. You got him. Now drive your line nice and smooth. That's Lance Hooper's spotter, crew chief. Tell me you got him now. Drive your line nice and smooth. Easy does it. The black car, the second car back is Craig Rodman, number two. Two or three. Nice and smooth. Take care of your tires. 
And once again, Rick Crawford in 14 trying to get by Rodman. They have been battling almost since the drop of the original green flag 45 or so minutes ago. And they're still side by side. Crawford trying to get the spot from Craig Rodman. We do have a relief driver in the 87 car. Mike Bonicelli has gotten out, and John Metcalf has stepped into that car. He's from Colorado. Bonicelli fighting a, uh, a health problem. And so John Metcalf is in the 87 machine. Well, Lance Hooper certainly disposed of the second-place car quickly, Benny. Now the question is, can he get up and challenge Ron Hornaday? Said he could. Yeah, he did. I'm not going to disbelieve him. He said he could. He was pretty confident. He said 15 laps to go. Here's Crawford to the inside of Rodman once again. So what else is new? This has been going on for... Oh! That was almost a different deal there yeah. because Crawford wisely backed off the gas got off that left rear fender and did not spin out Rodman. Hmm. That'd been nasty. Yep. It's like the 07 is indeed closing in on Hornaday. Ron is coming up on some slower traffic. By golly, he is, isn't he? Sure is. He's cut it to within two or three car lengths, and Lance Hooper is closing in, Bill. Student, that might be the student taking the teacher to school now. He learned a lot from, Hooper learned a lot from Hornaday because they used to work together. The 57 car goes around. Racing continues here in Tucson. And Hooper is now trying to get by his teacher. But last year in 1994, Lance didn't have a great year. He was the car owner as well as the driver and did a lot of work on the car in addition to a full-time job. After the 94 season, he sold the entire operation to Golden West Motorsports. Fortunately, they hired Lance as their driver. He's been able to devote everything in 1995 toward getting this car into victory lane. He won nine poles, including four in a row at one point, and made five trips to victory lane. Now, back in 1991, he was the Winston Racing Series champion who was working for a guy named Hornaday, who that year was the Southwest Tour champion, guys. <laughs> Man, how about that? There's that car that looks like a cow. Yeah, the M33 MK Kanky high on the racetrack. Behind him is the 28 of John Walsh. The 93 of Chris Rodman. The leader is in traffic. Here comes Hooper, passing the slower car of uh, Steve Teets in 68. There we see the leader, Ron Hornaday. We're riding along with Lance Hooper who started in six spots. Hornaday started eight. But remember, they inverted the fastest eight qualifiers, so Hornaday was actually the fastest qualifier. And Hooper was the third fastest qualifier. Now Hornaday has kind of broken away from that lap traffic as some of the other drivers now begin to move back markers. Rodman and Crawford still together as they go by Teets. Rick Crawford all the way from Alabama here to compete with uh, the Southwest Tour Series this afternoon. Well, it wasn't too bad. He left, Mo he left Mobile and drove up to Ozona and checked with and uh, stopped to see Mr. Tom. Oh! little contact there between the 33 and the 37. MK Kanky in the 33 and the... Oops, there's a spin. Mm. John Walsh goes around. He slides off the racetrack down into the uh, the apron of the racetrack. There should not be a caution if he's able to get back up on the track and uh, headed in the right direction. John is from Riverside, California. Here's Kanky and Keith Spangler battling for position. Weber has more on M.K. Kanky's run here this afternoon. He's having a pretty good day, and Benny, that car is seven years old. Can you believe that? Seven years old. He was third in points in 1995, and he had a pretty good season. Picked up a couple of wins. Didn't have a sponsor. Now, he picked up a sponsor for this race. In fact, they called him, said, we're good to go, and they're going to put him on in that car with Romeo Cheese and Paradise Cruises. 
as his sponsors in 1996. So Trickle now off the track on the front stretch. Did he spin or just pull off, Eddie? Looks like he just pulled off. Yep. Well, that's too bad. He's course, pointing to the hood of the car, telling his crew that there's some... Yep. Yeah, we heard Bill. Bill Weber, what'd you say, motor? Yeah, that's right. His crew's standing over here at the fence, guys. They're pretty brokenhearted after the great run last week, but he radioed back in, said the motor's gone, and it looks like they're done for today. Yeah. 100 laps completed, 50 to go, and here's the battle for second. Monroe has come up to challenge uh, Lance Hooper, Benny. Yes, they are, side by side. This is down the back stretch. Monroe on the inside, 48, Hooper in the 07, and man, they come off the corner side by side, and there's a smoker in front of them. They want, these guys are close, and finally Hooper backs up and lets Monroe go. Sean Monroe is a young man who... Uh, Put a bunch of oil up there. And there is a lot of smoke coming from the uh, 17 car, it would appear. That is Daryl Lamore. And he was black flagged, and he goes to the pits. Yep. You got eight or ten behind you. There's right. Lamore in the 17. Hooper now back to third. Sean Monroe has taken second. Sean Monroe has been listening to his Walkman. Every time that we saw him today, he had his earphones in, listening to a group called Live. Now, I've never heard of them, but uh, they must be pretty popular where he is. Well, that's a country band. I doubt it. I do, too. <laughs> he said he was from where, Malibu or someplace they do yeah. uh, surfing? Oh, yeah. Yep. He is quite a dude. I'll tell you what, he's quite a race car driver, he too. He sure is. Yep. Uh-oh! Here's Mark Wilson. He spun a couple of times today. That could be number three. It's at least number two for Mark. But again, no caution, sliding to the apron of the racetrack and getting back in, in the right direction. What well, they want, when you come off on that nine degree banking or six degree banking, it is tough. You need all that 12 degrees on the outside. Let's watch once again as Wilson comes off. And we can see he's in the middle of the racetrack. It's only nine degrees there. And bam, around he goes. And those fellas on top of the racetrack, it's banked 12 degrees up there. Meanwhile, Rodman and Crawford, guess what? They're still running together in the same order. Crawford just cannot get around Rodman. They have been battling like this all day long. There is Hooper running right in front of Rodman. It looks like they might be gaining just a little bit on yeah, Hooper. I think you're right. Meanwhile... Sean Monroe is in second, and Hornaday continues to lead. This is looking back from third place, Lance Hooper onto fourth and fifth. We'll take another break. You're watching ESPN2's Winter Heat. We'll be right back. Jenkins, Benny Parsons, and Bill Weber welcome you back to Tucson Raceway Park in the deserts of Arizona for winter heat. And Benny, you got to be impressed with Sean Monroe, who's running second in that 48 car. Now, he did win a race in 1995 at Bakersfield and is not letting Ron Hornaday get away. As a matter of fact, right he is right on his bumper. Man, oh man, this kid is really something. What did he say? He was 25 years old? 27. Clear. sixth or seventh race in the series he won at Bakersfield and is challenging the best of the best here this afternoon running second and we saw five cars directly in front of their leaders so Hornaday has got his work cut out for him as he tries to get through that slower traffic here in the next uh, 30 laps Bond truck and Ron, you're looking good. 117 laps now completed not too many caution flags this 75 left feature. Nope. The first one had three or four or five or six. Yeah, we've had some spins, but everybody has spun. Oh, oh Hornaday is loose. Maybe some contact there. Yep. Monroe, little contact in turn four. And here comes Hooper in 07. And he blows by Monroe or starts to. Yeah, he does. He takes second, but something's wrong with Monroe. Behind you now. Man, oh man, does he have a flat tire? I don't know. Maybe not. He's up to speed once again, but there for a while I thought he was. Uh, injured in some way. Anyway, Lance Hooper is second and closing in now on Hornaday. Let's take a look at it again. Maybe we can see what happened. Oh, man. Some pretty good contact between Monroe and Hornaday. And then they drove down into turn number one and Hooper passed Monroe. Let's do what we can do. We got something for him. 
Man, if you got something for him, now's the time to do it. Well, the first three cars are close enough to throw a blanket over. Got one car length behind. Actually, it's less than that yeah. one car length. Trust me, Hornaday knows exactly where Hooper is located. There's Monroe Rodman in front of the following, and Hooper goes to the inside. And he got the car side, but you see that right rear tire smoke? Oh, now, let's get your tires cool down. Nice and smooth. Oh, Hornaday's getting extremely loose. Man, is he? He was all over the racetrack coming off of turn and four. Now Hooper don't let him and in. Monroe are side by side down the back stretch. And you heard Hooper's crew chief tell him, don't let him there. in. You're clear. They're the top five right there. Man, oh man. Hornaday is really struggling. 50 to go at the line. You're looking good. Man, 50 to go. No, it's 25 to go. That's what I thought. Yeah. Still right there behind you. Let your tires cool and we'll get a run at them. They count about like you do, Jenkins. He must be using 15 to go, Kenny, and then 10 and 5. Hooper goes to the inside. He may get the lead here in one. Force him up now. Drift up slowly. Drift up slowly. Drift up. Can't do it. Drift up coming off of there. Oh, and Hooper sideways and spinning. Oh, oh no, man. No. Fun down low four. <laughs> And no caution flag. No. Oh, man. Lance, baby. <laughs> so now, Sean Monroe is left to challenge her today. Look at it again. Once again, he gets in there and just does not have enough banking to keep the back end in check. And the round he goes. And look at Crawford. Yeah. He looks like he even had a shot at Rodman. But nope, Crawford is still behind Rodman. It's still Hornaday, Monroe, Rodman, and Crawford. Folks, you are seeing some stars of the future perform here this afternoon. And there's M.K. Kanky in the 33 car, trying to stay on the lead lap. Hornaday right behind him. Kanky six feet six. He can just about move his torso into that car. Hornaday now to the inside. Three abreast through the corner. Oh, Hornaday is not in a good position. Oh, man. And he survived. The 46th car to the inside was Danny Crafton. Now here comes Monroe around Crafton. Man, what a great race. This is good. And we've got less than 20 to go. 19. Oh, no. Oh, oh, loses the back and allows Rodman to close in. But Crafton is there in the Oh, oh, and Monroe, Monroe loses the back end again, and here comes Rodman. But Crafton is still there. Rodman takes second. Rodman Crawford trying to take third. Rick cars behind you with a car in between you. Rick Crawford trying to take third from Monroe. He does. Monroe has driven that car awful hard, Benny. He's heated up the tires. Looks bit. like he has now. Meanwhile, Hornaday is still trying to put a lap on M.K. Kanky. Yep, he hasn't gotten by him yet. He may down here and won this time. Meanwhile, oh, and Kanky was about to lose the back. Looks good. You got about 10 cars on him. Yeah, all of this has allowed Hornaday to pull away a little bit from Rodman. 15 at the line. 15 to go. Kanky between Hornaday, the leader, and Rodman in second. Craig Rodman. Ooh, what? Down low here in the back shoot. Keep going. And we have a spin. Jeff Crow is sideways. Meanwhile, the 37 car of Keith Spangler, who was on the lead lap for quite a while, has pulled off the racetrack beside Chris Trickle. Still no caution. Crow gets the car going once again. There is Spangler in 37 who pulled off the racetrack. He was in eighth position. Man, oh man. Here comes Hornaday. There's Craig Rodman. Good. Looking good. Rodman is the next car behind you, about 10 cars there. And Rodman and Crawford are still nose to tail. This time, though, it's for second position. Seven cars are on the lead lap with 139 laps completed. 11 to go. Crawford going up there that, right at the top of the racetrack, trying to catch some green track to get some momentum so he can get alongside Rodman. And down the, the line, you're looking good, Ron. Hornaday is a two-time 
NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour champion. Had two victories. He only competed five times in the Southwest Tour Series in 95 and won two of the races. What about three car lanes on Rodman. Those victories were at Phoenix and at Sonoma. You know, Rodman is faster right now, I believe, than Hornaday, but right now he has to drive a little bit defensive because of another spin there's mark wilson again sideways in the corner and this one will bring out the caution the caution is out here one uh, four i'm sorry well this is going to bunch him up benny and perhaps allow rodman and crawford to take a shot at ron hornaday we are eight laps from the end of this exciting southwest tour race here in v uh, tucson we'll be right back Tucson Raceway Park is the venue, and we are set. Ben is going to be three laps of green. They're now receiving the one-to-go signal. There are 146 completed now. They'll get the green at 147. Three laps. Shootout. Ron Hornaday is your leader. Running in second position is Craig Rodman. Then Rick Crawford, Sean Monroe, and the fifth-place car is Lance Hooper, I believe. There are only seven on the lead lap, and Hooper would be in fifth. I believe... Start, Jimmy. I guess gross price might be in six spot. No, I guess 55 is. Go, 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 go. Here we are. The green flag is out. Three laps to go. Carly. Hornaday got a good jump. Crawford going Crawford for a second. second. Ah, he's shot Rodman. He kind of squeezed Rodman up against the fence and said, okay, contact to the fence. And Rodman said, okay, I'll back out of it just a little bit. Two laps to go. Hornaday lengthens his lead over Rick. Come in, come in. Smooth, Ron. You got him. One at the line. He's about 10 cars behind you. Looking good. White flag coming out. One to go. 10 car length nice advantage for Hornaday. No threat. No threat. No threat. Everybody take it home. Hornaday is going to win it. Beautiful job, Ron. Big play. Rick Crawford finished second, followed by Craig Rodman, Sean Monroe, and Lance Hooper in a spin up in turn number two after the checkered came out by Mark Grosskreitz. Typical of what we saw here this afternoon at Tucson Raceway Park. We'll be right back. Ron Hornaday Jr. wins his 19th career NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour victory. His last win was at Sears Point on May the 6th. Here he is. And here's Bill Weber. Well, happy homecoming. Congratulations. Well, I'll tell you what, it's great so we can give this money to these kids. And uh, I'll tell you what, these guys put an awesome car together. I mean, uh, change that spring and everything. Hey, one thing, I got to say hi to everybody and back at home. And hopefully they enjoyed the party. Really and right right and, uh, we'll I don't know, it's been a great day. As much fun for you now as it was a year ago, maybe more fun now, everything that's happened to you in the last year. Well, it's actually tougher now. They expect, you know, they got to go out and beat Dale Earnhardt's driver, you know, so I got to go out there and run hard as I could. And, uh, you know, last year we started on the pole because fast time was on the pole, and here we, you know, we started eight, so I wanted to get to the front fast, see what we had for everybody, but I'm going to have to look at my car because they're stick only, ultra wheels, winds oil, red line oil, Repco, Sierra brakes. Let me ask you about that uh, student teacher thing because the, the student went around on you back there, Lance. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Sean Monroe came out of my shop and with everything, and uh, Lance Hooper I helped out when he first started racing, and man, they started putting pressure on this old man, and they can't be, keep doing that. But, uh, did, did you see Lance go around? I never seen Lance go around. Uh, he was pushing me pretty hard off the corner. I started, you know, back to the corner to get off straighter, and it worked out pretty good. So. Does this car, you sold this car this morning. Doesn't it go up in value when you win, Ron? Well, it did go up in value when we got fast time, and I couldn't put a price on it because I didn't know what kind of condition it was going to come out in. But uh, this winter heat and everything, it's been great. And I got to thank Gary and Nancy Johnson for supporting everything. But, uh, you know, why won't Matt come aboard again? And uh, uh, HR generator towed this thing down here on a little flat trailer. We didn't have nothing, so uh, Gary's, Gary's trailer's using for, uh, you know, earthquake victim deal, so... But, We've had a great day. i got to say hi to everybody. Good year. Great tire again. I mean, 75 laps as hard as we can run, and it stayed there. Um, you know, we made we made a deal of this uh, make wishing 
make a wish. Make a wish <laughs> deal has been, uh, this is my wish came true and my dream came true driving for Dale Earnhardt and, you know, all the guys back there. And uh, we figured, uh, you know, Gary and I came up with the idea of uh, let's give something back to Tucson. They've been great to me, so we figured we'd get a half our purse there and we'd like to get her down here if we can find her. And and uh, we'll cut her a check as soon as we figure out how much we want and uh, we'd love to get her a check right now and uh, hopefully we get a kid happy for Christmas and everything. Ron Hornaday in Victory Lane, congratulations. Back up top. Took the lead on lap number 11, so he led 140 of the 150 laps. Ron Hornaday wins Winter Heat. Tucson Raceway Park in the deserts of Tucson, Arizona, ESPN 2's Winter Heat Series. And Kenny Main will have all the results of everything else that has happened in the world of motorsports today and this week past on RPM Tonight. In a little more than two hours from now, that's at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN 2. Well... <laughs> The uh, winner is Ron Hornaday. However, there was a battle between Craig Rodman and Rick Crawford all race long, and this is what happened just after the green came out for the final time. That's Rodman in the black number two, Rick Crawford in the blue number 14. He goes down in one, gets a great battle, but he comes off the corner and just drifts up in front of Rodman, and Rodman really had no choice ex except back off the throttle. He did. Crawford took over second place, finished there. He's with Bill Weber. Oh, we're just talking about the day's events. Obviously, uh, some thrilling moments. Talk about your little battle with Rodman in the first one. Uh, you know, it was a, a cheap shot deal if you wanted to take him early. But, uh, no, we came out here to race against these boys, and uh, they, they ran a super race with us. And, uh, you know, it was one of them deals where I tried him two or three times on the bottom, and it overheat my right rear. And I said, no, nah, we're going to wait to the right moment there. And uh, every time we got ready to start start to, to make our move, uh, somebody was in our way or something like that. But, uh we made it at the right time, didn't have enough laps left to deal with Hornaday, but, uh, you know, starting from 14th, finishing second here is a good run for the Circle Bar Motel and RV Park forward. Ron got a pretty good jump on that last restart too, Rick. Yeah, and we started third, and uh, that was just the difference of what was in between the two cars. So uh, I'm proud of my team and uh, glad we made it all the way from Alabama and Georgia out here to run against these boys on the west. Uh, just appreciate the team doing such a good job. Yeah, racing in Tucson on a Sunday afternoon in December. Nothing to it, huh? Hey, a hot day out here in Tucson with ESPN. I mean, the last race we run on ESPN, we won, so second ain't too bad. Well, you come back a couple weeks, right? We'll be back. Thanks. Okay, that's Rick Crawford, guys. Yeah, the Winter Heat uh, NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour will be back here in January for another event. They will start their 1996 season here, as a matter of fact. We have more to come as we wrap things up here from Tucson Raceway Park. Again, Ron Hornaday has won our second of six Winter Heat events here this year. We'll be right back. Winter Heat about to conclude here at Tucson Raceway Park. Ron Hornaday wins. Second place went to Rick Crawford. Here is Bill Weber with Lance Hooper. And Lance, a lot of great moments this season. Uh, a strong run today, but one moment that you're not going to want to recall when we get to Christmas morning, huh? Yeah, well, uh, my team did real good. Firebird Oil and Pontiac. You know, they put a great car underneath me. You know, I thought I had something there for Hornaday at the end, and I went underneath them to pass them, and there's just too much debris in that lower line, and the car just didn't stick. And, you know, we tried, and I didn't go home and wonder if I could have passed them. Uh, we got a top five, so the team's happy, and uh, we'll get them next time. Well, you promised us a lot of excitement in the second half of the race, and you delivered uh, your assessment of the, the day. Do you think you could have gotten by Ron if you'd gotten to him? Yeah, Ronnie started by, backing up at the end, but unfortunately my car worked in the same groove he was running in. And By the time I got underneath him, he held me low, and the car got real loose. And I learned from my mistakes, and we'll come back next time a lot stronger. Yeah, you're coming back, we know, for this race in a couple of weeks. We see you maybe here next week? Um, I'm going to sure try. I'm going to try to get me a late model race and uh, try to put on another show for the fans at ES ESPN there. Okay, Lance Hooper with a good run today. He's the series champ. Back up top. He finished in fifth position. Here's the full field rundown. Crawford, of course, second. Rodman, third. Sean Monroe, Benny. There's the name you got to watch for in the future. I was impressed with the job that that young man did today. Ron uh, Eaton finished in sixth. He's an old veteran from the Northwest Tour. Uh, Kevin Harvick performed well, finishing in seventh position. M.K. Kanky. Uh, may have won the $200 for moving up the best. Yeah, I don't really know why. World of Maps here in Tucson put up the money. I don't know exactly who won it, but I think MK Kanky had a good shot at it. 
And there are the top 15 here, 16 through 28, as four cars failed to finish this event. And it wasn't a particularly good day for Chris Trickle, who dropped back to the 23rd finishing position. Actually, he didn't finish the race. He uh, pulled off and uh, sat there the rest of the event. But next week, back with more late mile stock cars. And you think it's going to be more of the same? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Oh, man. This, this is really a good racetrack. I mean, the way that the banking is, you can run three and sometimes four abreast. And we've just seen some excellent, excellent racing here in the first two weeks. And there, of course, is a lot more to go. Secrets of Speed, by the way, is coming up next here on uh, ESPN2. So uh, stay tuned for more auto racing type action. And, of course, RPM tonight coming up at 8 o'clock. The beautiful desert surrounding Tucson, Arizona. It is a beautiful day out here in the deserts. And uh, we'll be looking forward to coming back next week for another round. As a matter of fact, next week it's going to be, as Lance Hooper indicated, round number two of the three-race Winston Challenge. This will be featuring the NASCAR Winston Racing Series. These are the guys that run every Saturday night at their local track, and they have come from all over the western part of the United States to compete here. They did last week, and they're going to be back again next week. Yeah, there's a lot of crashing and banging and bumping going on, but also some great competition. Greg Biffle was the winner last week. He'll try for another victory. $5,000 goes to the winner of the three-race Winston Challenge Series. 4 o'clock Eastern Time next Sunday afternoon, the third of our six NASCAR Winter Heat Series from Tucson Raceway Park. Ron Hornaday has won here this weekend and chalks up another victory in the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour event. Well, Benny and Bill and I will all be back next week for another round. We hope you will join us. Our congratulations to Ron. In the meantime, take care, and we'll see you next week.